Hello and welcome. The topic of today's discussion is whether you whether or not you should learn XYZ technology in 2023. Well, it really depends on what you're looking to do, but the short answer I would say is absolutely yes. Now, there are many reasons why you would want to learn another technology, another stack, another language, but ultimately at the end of the day, the variety is going to give you nothing but experience and more insight into how to be a better software developer and to write better applications. The more exposure you have to multiple languages, the more you'll be able to understand different paradigms, different software architecture principles, as well as various design patterns, which are ultimately the building blocks of quality software. And as you do so, even if you decide not to master a language, exploring another language, looking at its constructs, looking at how the basic building blocks are structured, and looking at the syntax will help you to really become a, a more advanced developer in terms of being able to look at a solution or look at code and be able to gauge right away. If anything else, this will help to build your intuition, which I have found over the years to be absolutely essential and I have yet to be proven wrong with my in intuition, whether it comes to projects, code, architecture, design. So, but that has taken many, many years to develop and I would urge you as well to look at exploring different languages, particularly different types or classes of languages. For example, there are languages that are prototype based languages, such as JavaScript. There are other languages which fall into the class based language categories, such as Java. And then there are functional languages, which are such as Haskell, and they may be used for academic purposes, but you can actually build with some current frameworks today, web applications with them. Now, it's it, it can vary in terms of the complexity that you have to deal with in each of these languages. So that's why it's not necessarily that you need to master each language, as I said earlier, but rather to familiarize yourself with the different contracts that exist across the spectrum of languages. For, for my example, uh, I started very, very early with BASIC, and, and BASIC was quite just that, BASIC. It was very easy to build small little programs, but they weren't interactive, they did not have UIs, and you couldn't really build the web, robust web applications that we've all come to expect today. As the web is now our primary medium of interacting with the internet, it is absolutely essential to be able to build web applications today. Uh, web mobile, you know, interactive applications, data-driven and thus, you know, more modern. Now, uh, the next language that I jumped to was Pascal. And in Pascal, I built my first check, uh, how would I describe this? A, a first accounting slash check publishing system. This is a time in an era when we didn't really have direct deposits to bank accounts and rather you received a physical check, you know, at the end of your pay period by your employer and you would take that to the bank and deposit the check to receive the funds as your as your salary. And we were still living in an era of dot matrix printers. And if you've if you've seen one of them, those are the ones that are very noisy and they squeak across line at a time and then carriage return to the next line. Very similar to what you'd see with a typewriter. So I built a check management and I guess you could say payroll system, although it was a very light payroll system, back in the late. 90s with Pascal, or sorry, mid 90s with late with Pascal uh, for a client. And that was, you know, quite a lot of fun. Now, the other thing you can look at once you've looked at exploring a particular language is to understand what some of its limitations are and what are its strengths. Hopefully by exposing yourself to multiple languages, that is the one key takeaway that you should have. What are the good things about Java? What are its downsides? What are the pros of Ruby? What are its downsides? What are the pros of JavaScript? And thus its downsides. As a software developer, you should have a toolbox of languages that you can pull things out of to solve the particular problem that you have at hand. More so than focusing on the semantics, the language, the syntax, you should be understanding what problem the, the particular language toolkit or stack can solve and, and why because those will ultimately be the more valuable tools to you as you start to build higher and higher understanding from just language, syntax, and semantics into structures and thus classes and objects and, and design patterns to software architectures to system level thinking and design. And that's generally, that's generally been the path and journey that I've taken. I've exposed myself to a lot of different languages from a lot of different classes and my, my 
you know, I think I've been better for it. There is also the question that people may ask depth versus breadth. Hey, should I look at 20 different languages and study those to get a bigger picture? Or should I dive in deep and look at just, for example, JavaScript and spend 10 years mastering everything that is JavaScript? Well, I would say to that answer, to that question, excuse me, that it's personal preference. It really depends on what you're looking to do. I enjoy knowing the why and how and the concepts. So for me, it was really about learning the broad spectrum of languages as well as systems, IT, networking, systems administration, operating systems, and and the, and the gamut. So hopefully that answers the question for you. It really depends, but the short and brief of it is yes. Absolutely learn XYZ technology, programming language, or stack in 2023 because, 2023 because it will ultimately help you to be a better software developer. Thank you.